Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello there to all my listeners. It's been a while since I've recorded a podcast episode and... A lot has been happening in my life. Good things, to be honest. Um, so I haven't been as available. But here we are with yet another very interesting episode. So today we're going to dive much deeper into number seven, or as I like to call it, the wise number seven. But for those of you who are new here, this podcast is dedicated to the deep study of numerology. We discuss numerology as a path for inner transformation, for inner growth and self-understanding. And I try to make numerology as accessible and applicable for everyday life matters. Now, a few points. Um, if you haven't done so yet, I really welcome you to join my Facebook numerology group. The link is found in the podcast's main page. You can also find it on Facebook, of course, under the name Numerology GPS for the Soul. Another thing is, if you haven't received a numerology reading in your life, I would highly recommend doing so to get clarity about who you are, your destiny, your challenges, your potentials. If you want to try that out, check out my website. Again, the link is provided in the episode description and the podcast description. And last but not least... If you want to study numerology, check out my self-paced study course. The link is again given in the podcast description and the episode description. And having said that, without further ado, let us dive in and go deeper into number seven. Now, of all numbers, it is certainly number seven that captured most attention from many mystics throughout the ages. In fact, Pythagoras, I'm sure many, many of you heard that name, uh, perhaps when you were in school studying geometry. But Pythagoras in the world of numerology is known as the father of Western numerology, the most prevalent, active and evolving numerology method throughout the world. So in fact, Pythagoras considered seven his favorite number and deemed any person born with a life path seven as destined to a spiritual life. Perhaps not only a person with a life path seven, but somebody for whom seven is a very central number in their chart. Now, um, to be very transparent, I myself have a life path number seven, a soul urge number seven, and a maturity number seven. So... Yours truly knows number seven very intimately. Um, and that was, that's what also gives me, you know, the, the right, I would say, um, or the direct knowledge to be able to share much more about number seven, not only as somebody, not only as like external knowledge, but as the living knowledge of my own life. And naturally, of course, many years of meeting many, many people with number seven and inquiring deeper and deeper into the essence of this very beautiful and special number. Now, what makes number seven so special? You know, besides the fact that there are seven days of creation or seven chakras in our energy body or seven subtle bodies, according to the yogic tradition, what makes number seven so special? Well, I think that first and foremost, number seven cannot help it but search for the truth, even if it's hard and even if there are heavy prices to pay. And I think that out of all numbers, seven is willing to pay the highest prices 
for the search of truth. It's willing to go the deepest. It's willing to ask brave and daring uh, and scary questions, existential questions that most people will do everything to avoid and to push under the carpet. Seven cannot help it but ask deep questions, try to look behind um, appearances and try to really fathom and understand why are we here? What is all of this? You see, by nature, seven doesn't feel that what we perceive as the obvious is actually obvious. What is obvious after all? Is anything obvious? What, what is obvious about us existing, right? We take everything for granted. This life, our breathing, our having a body, um, needing to go to work, having kids, being able to shout, scream, get angry, sad, happy, have sex, have experiences, traveling, getting disappointed, getting married, getting divorced, etc., etc. We, we don't take time often enough. We don't take a distance. We don't zoom out and observe and ask ourselves, what on earth is this mysterious life? What is this? Nothing is taken for granted. Nothing. We don't even know how the heck we're able to articulate a sentence that makes sense and listen to somebody else's sentence and understand it. We will our hands to move just by wanting them to move. But what the heck and how is this all possible? You see, most people are afraid to delve deeper into these questions. It feels as if they undermine the very foundation of their existence, the very sense of basic safety. But a true seven, a seven that's connected to their power, will not avoid such questions. So that's, to me, first and foremost, what makes the seven so special. The, this kind of daringness, this kind of courage to look into the truth of things. And it takes... It takes a lot of courage to look into the truth of things. It can be scary. It can be disorienting. It can dismantle many of the ways and habits and perceptions we held dear and close to our heart about ourselves, about the world, about reality for the sake of truth. Another interesting thing about number seven is that they're a natural alien um, and what I mean by that is not so much an alien as in, you know, somebody from outer space, but they're made to be an observer of life rather than fully participate. In that sense, an alien, almost like, right, like someone who's a spectator looking at things from, from the outside. They are meant to have this deep insight into the nature of things as if penetrating behind the matrix, right? They, they, um, they take a deep look into whatever is happening. They take their time and their gaze is deep. Very often you can see this intensity and depth in their eyes. And their this ability of theirs can be incredibly revelatory, but also challenging. Um, it's not easy to see many things, Right? We often have this um, saying, ignorance is bliss. And I believe we say that because we know that it's not easy to know. The moment you know things, many of your dreams shatter. Many of your hopes evaporate. You simply see things as they are. And sometimes it's beautiful, but sometimes it's heartbreaking so this is why often sevens feel like outsiders because um, compared to other numbers, they're not able to not see the multi-layered um, fact of existence. When they meet other people, they often see straight away many layers. They look behind the facade and Naturally, they sense and feel many layers, many undercurrents that the person perhaps doesn't want to portray, but seven see it, right? So you can imagine that it's hard to pretend. It's hard for a seven to pretend that they aren't seeing what they are. 
Um, so they often see what most people can't see. And they are able to see through lies, through masks, through all superficial layers, right into the heart of truth. Now, this can make them an incredible asset. For example, if somebody is really interested to know the truth, they are truly a gift. But, you know, they can also be an incredible nuisance if somebody wants to stay asleep, if somebody wants everything but the truth. And the truth is, speaking as a number seven, is that most people, to be really, really honest, 99.999% of the people want to stay asleep and will do everything it takes to stay asleep. And for that reason, very often sevens feel as outsiders, feel rejected, feel unwanted, um, and often develop a kind of like personality trait or habit to feel that something is wrong with them. But that's not quite the truth. Moving on to another very interesting um, characteristic, I would say, or I would even call it like a little superpower of number seven, and maybe that'll surprise some of you who are already working numerologists. I call sevens the shapeshifters. And more specifically, the the 25 seven. It it, it's all, it is also valid like with other sevens, but I would say with the 25 seven, this is most um, noticeable. But sevens, by and large, are able to temporarily turn into other numbers' energies as if by feeling them from within and understanding them deeply. It's like they are able to temporarily step into their experience. A seven can really contemplate deeply about, for example, the essence of number three and enter into their shoes, step into their shoes for a while and truly experience their world for a while or the world of number eight or five or any other number for that matter. This is a truly unique ability that perhaps no other number possesses to the same extent. I would say that numbers two and nine share this ability to an extent. The empathy of number two and the universality, this all-encompassing quality of number nine, give them the capacity to do something similar, but not to the same extent. Not in my experience. It's really a gift of number seven. And so by shapeshifter, I mean they're able to literally shapeshift into another number temporarily. And this is what allows them, for example, to create models of development um, for, for everybody, for, for many, many people, and, and, and also become great teachers because they can truly look at a person, even if they're not a seven, and understand their unique structure and truly put themselves in their shoes and understand the world from their perspective temporarily, right? And go in and out of that state, visit that state again and again. And by doing so, um, having like this deeper access and ability to truly be helpful for all the numbers as a teacher, as a guide, as a consultant. Mm, now, if a seven is truly in their power, truly connected and truly in their element, they exude a deep sense of inner knowing and inner authority. They have this deep trust in their inner wisdom and are able to leave a profound impact on other people. If a seven is truly connected to their, to their core and you feel like you need some empowering advice, something that will truly lift you, something that will help you overcome um, a long-term sort of blockage, talk to a good seven, talk to an empowered seven, because they are truly able to talk from a place of deep knowing, a place that will penetrate the deeper layers of your being and inspire you and move you and give you that strength. Because when they trust themselves, when they come from inner authority, that energy will pass on to you and will give you that kind of confidence of inner wisdom and inner authority. 
And when a seven is truly mature, they really know what they're talking about comes from an experience. It doesn't come from an intellectual perspective. They have gotten in touch with reality. And so they speak from a deep inner state. And that's truly transformative, transformational. Sevens can penetrate right into the heart of the matter. This can be extremely helpful if one wants to break a persistent psychological blockage, for example, with a strong momentum that one couldn't really penetrate so far or put a pin on, right? Sometimes it's hard for us to really grasp fully what's going on with us. Like, what's the matter? Why is this repeating in my life? Why am I blocked in this or that, you know, area? Sevens are brilliant in being able to see you and penetrate right into the heart of the matter and help you sometimes like flip a momentum 180 degrees and and let you, you know, um, and, and, and like catapult you, uh, help you make a, a true leap into the next evolutionary stage. It can also be a little bit scary to converse with a seven. I mean, because for the same reason, to be honest, like they can truly touch those spots that we want to protect and hide. And as I already mentioned, most people want to protect and hide. Most people, even people who claim to be spiritual, um, most of them want an image of being spiritual. But when the moment of truth arise, arrives, when they are uh, being called out on, or when somebody really criticizes them, criticizes them and like you know um, exposes their dishonesty or their um, self deception, that's when people start being aggressive, protective, defensive, etc. So you know, be prepared when diving into deep talks with an empowered seven because they are uncompromising people when it comes to truth, and they're a gift for those who appreciate truth. But one has to know what they're dealing with. So that's, that's kind of like the, the gift and the curse of a number seven, of a person, you know, of a strong number seven. And again, I'm speaking from a lot of experience. So I think that those of you who listen to me regularly in this podcast know that I'm talking really from a place of depth and from a place of heart. Like I'm a, I'm a no bullshit person. I don't like to, to, to say all kinds of like airy fairy woo stuff. I don't like talking uh, rubbish new age things. I like to talk deep numerology. I like to give information that makes a person wiser, that pushes all of us, all of you guys to grow up, to mature, to think for yourselves, to use numerology as a way to, to grow, right? I don't want you to, to have uh, childish dreams about yourselves. This is the last thing I would like to, to, do, to, to, to um, have numerology do to you. Um, so you can, see in the, you, can, you can see me as an example um, as a teacher of numerology and transformational spirituality, the way I talk, the way I write, the way I record podcasts, the way I write, it's, it's, it has this kind of depth, this kind of uncompromising truthfulness to it. Some will connect to it and some won't. That's a predicament of a seven. Um, sevens are, you know, might not be as popular, like, very quickly, um, you know, other numbers have it easier. For example, nine or five or five, nine together. But in the long run, they might definitely earn themselves like a uh, reputation. And so it takes a bit more time because of their quality, because sevens are people of quality over quantity. Um, I hate marketing myself, for example. I'll be like really open and transparent with you guys. I hate marketing myself. I put extremely little to no energy into marketing. I just like giving my wisdom. Naturally, like every person, I need to make my income to make ends meet. But it's like I'm making so little effort for that. Like I'm just, I prefer to, to, to I prefer that it takes longer rather than just like work, work, work um, and, and compromise, you know, the quality of what I give you guys and grow over time because, because I've earned your, your respect and I've earned your trust through authentic knowledge, 
through through my love to to truth. Yes, of course, I mentioned my online, you know, self-study course in the beginning and the readings, which are natural ways for me to to uh, make a living. But believe me, when I give those things, I give them with all my heart and all my soul. So a couple more things that we should know about number seven. Um, sometimes a seven will actually not lean into spirituality. And that might sound strange to some of you. Uh, because we always talk about seven as like the spiritual guy or 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 lady, you know, like uh, the mystic. But actually, sevens sometimes will lean more into science or into the academic world. Um, sometimes through philosophy, so they can't avoid the pursuit of truth, but they won't necessarily um, go at it through spirituality through mysticism, but often through science and philosophy. Oftentimes, you're going to see a combination of those. So that's an interesting thing. The pursuit of truth is going to be consistent, but the methodology might change. Now, I can't, you know, being a seven myself, I can't um, stop, I can't like end this episode before mentioning like um, two of the major shadows of number seven. So, First, um, I would say that one of the biggest shadows sevens have to deal with is not trusting themselves and searching for answers from the outside, right? Sounds a bit like, whoa, didn't we just say that seven is about inner authority and like inner knowing? Well, yes, it is. But very often, like what we are is also our deepest um, challenge. So in a sense, like when seven is more uh, on the weakened side of things, they will often be met with self-doubt. They will often feel like somebody else needs to tell them what is true or help them trust themselves. And their life trajectory is always going to, you know, go in these spiral um, movements again and again, bringing them back to that point where they have to trust themselves, lean into their own inner knowing um, into their own convictions and become and grow in inner authority. The second biggest shadow of number seven is their tendency to be very arrogant and to think they know everything and therefore not be good listeners uh, at times, tend, tend to be dismissive, um, right? So like not really listen to the people that talk to them, thinking they already know everything. Now, the, the fact is that very often they do know a lot and very often they are accurate, but this in no way gives them any form of entitlement to be arrogant. By all means, I consider that a shadow and something that needs to be worked on, and I include myself in that. I've done a lot of inner work about that, and I'm extremely happy you know, to see all those layers of arrogance and, and unattentiveness you know, being shed being shed away um, off of me. And I'm, I'm super happy to see this lightness and this availability and, and ability to listen, which naturally just allows me to be even more truthful and more honest, which is what I truly love as a seven. So yeah, why is number seven? That's the title of this episode. And I think that we can understand why. Now, I hope this inspires you. My friends, I hope this inspires you to learn more about the numbers and to educate yourself in numerology. It's so empowering and so important. So again, uh, if you haven't um, heard that in the beginning of the episode, just some cool things you should know about if you want to dive deeper into numerology. A, you can join my Facebook numerology group. The link is in the podcast description. You can also find it on Facebook. If you wish to get a numerology reading, please contact me through my website link. It's all provided in the episode description. If you want to study numerology yourself in a methodical and self-paced way, check out my self-study online numerology course. All quality and very engaging. That's it, my friends, for today. I wish you all the very best. Happy to release a new episode after two months of being away. And I, as always, will see you in the next episodes. Take care.
I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.